Today, my featured guest is Jennifer Keller, and she is the founder and CEO of Red Bird Press. Red Bird Press, she's going to tell us why that name is so significant to her. She's a messenger of heaven, she says. All right, we're going to have to test her. We're going to test her, BC Nation. You know I'm good at poking. I'm like a spiritual sniper. Oh, goodness. I come right in. That should intimidate her just a bit. Uh, But Jennifer's done some really cool stuff lately, and God's been working in her life in a powerful way. She's going to tell us about it. Uh, But Jennifer, I wanted to bring you on the show. You were introduced by another guest, Tim Howard, uh, who's a pretty cool, uh, you know, former military badass who occurs so calm, cool, and collective, like very unassuming. Yet, you know, deep inside, he was that guy. You know, he was Mm -hmm. that guy. Anyway, he connected us and uh, he said, Joseph, Jennifer's up to some really amazing things. She's got this this journal for women. She's got a journal for men coming out that I've been using, he says, and uh, you just got to have her on the show. So here she is in all her great glory, BC Nation, Jennifer Keller. Welcome to Broken Catholic, number one podcast in the world for Protestants and Catholics. Go ahead and fill in some of the gaps in that intro, would you? Hey, so thank you so much for having me. That was a wonderful intro. Um, I'm I'm excited to be here today. I'm so grateful for you, Joseph, in stepping out and and really carrying a message to people that that we need to hear, right? Um, and for Tim for connecting us. That man is such like he is in my corner, like spreading the word. I love him so much for that. Um, but yeah, so I'm on a I'm on a faith journey, and God is really working in my life in some really incredible ways. And a lot of times, it's very uncomfortable <laughs> um, having to really surrender and um, just go let go and 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 trust. Um, I'm I'm also an entrepreneur in the insurance space, and I've been doing um, I've been I've had my agency in my business for 16 years. Uh, I predominantly represent a little company that maybe you've heard, Aflac. The um, one with the duck, with the duck. The one with the duck. That's right. That's some good um, branding right there. Oh my goodness. That the, our marketing department is brilliant. Um, but Affleck has really afforded me the opportunity to be creative and, you know, be a woman of faith in my business. And I know not everybody feels that they can do that. And so it's a really special culture that we have all the way from corporate into my local agency. Um, I'm a wife. I'm a mother. I have three children and they're teaching me every single day new things about life and how to live and what's most important. Um, you know, I'm, I'm naturally an achiever, which is where God really rocked my world and, and made me stop and taught me that I'm not in control. Mm. Uh, and, um, also I think that was, um, being an achiever is a way that God got me through a lot of hard things. Um, so sometimes our strength can, can also be our weakness and they can be two ways that God works through us. Um, so that's that's a little bit about me. I'm excited to share with you the Redbird journey. Um, nice. and, you know, I'm I'm not worried about you poking. Uh, I'm pretty excited <laughs> to see what comes from it. <laughs> oh, she <laughs> dared me. Challenge accepted. <laughs> All right, Jennifer. Let's start off uh, with uh, take a minute. Share something about you. Uh, something personal that very few people in your business life, your Aflac life, uh, even know about you. Sure. Well, I think, um, you know, very few know really just the the hardship that I endured as a child, um, which I think propelled me to be successful, but also has held me back in so many ways. Um, When I was three, my mom, um, my mom had to give us up to my great aunt. So Mm. abandonment started at the age of three. Mm. And I've had this narrative in my mind my whole life if my own mother couldn't love me enough, who will ever love me? Mm-hmm. And so that feeling of alone has always pushed me to want to people please or be in the in crowd or have the things, be the person. Um, and yeah, it's created a lot of success, but also I've I've been a very lonely person in a room full of people mm. uh, most of my life. And I'm so grateful um, to God for the faith journey I've been on the last couple of years because I've learned in so many ways I'm not alone. 
uh, we're never alone because he's always right there holding our right hand. Right. Um, but it's been, it's been a hard way, you know, but I think my story creates hope for people. Um, and I think it points right to him. Mm. Well, look at this BC nation. We just got real. We went deep <laughs> in like 60 seconds. Jennifer, thanks for sharing that. You know, there's so many people walking around in the crowd that feel alone. Mm -hmm. So many people. And like, you didn't choose that at three years old. Mm -hmm. Right? You were born into this family where this situation happened and it hurt. It hurt. Uh, man, abandonment. Mm -hmm. You know, always trying to people please, right? To compensate which is really just a kid just screaming out, please don't leave me. Yeah. Like, are you going to leave me too? Like, please, I'll do anything. And, and that can lead to poor decision-making, right? Sometimes in our life as well, poor choices of relationships, right? Um, wow. Such a blessing though, right? Such a blessing when we have pain and we're able to put a purpose to it. But when we don't put that purpose to it, it's just pain and it just hurts. And it, like, I think God wants to show us the purpose behind the pain. Like, this is why I allowed this in your life. Mm -hmm. I didn't choose this for you. You're humans. You have free will. Your brokenness, your mom's brokenness, other people's brokenness, put this all together, right? But I allowed it because I'm going to bring a greater good from it in your life. Right? And that's the hopefulness that, that we desire. So, Jennifer, thank you for going there with us right out the gate. I asked for something personal, and you gave us the farm, like the yeah. whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That was great. All right, awesome. Uh, let's get into uh, your story. So you're three years old. This happens. Abandonment happens. You get the childhood wounds, which are mommy wounds. Did you have any daddy wounds as well? Where was dad? Yeah, so I, I do not know my biological father. So, so you have daddy wounds. That's yeah, abandonment right there. Thanks, Dad. There. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Jeez. I know, I know. But you know what did happen? God did place me in the hands of the best dad I could have ever asked for. Um, so I, I have a wonderful dad. He's not my father, but he never made me feel any different. Um, you know, so he came along when I was probably six. Um, but you know, my, my great aunt that we lived with, uh, she added to the wounds and the problems. She was not a very, uh, healthy person in herself. And as I've been through a lot of therapy and prayer and, uh, you know, just trying to figure this thing out, um, hurt people, hurt people. Mm -hmm. Right. And when we have these wounds, we have like, the, the, the most capacity to really hurt other people. And, you know, she was living through those and, you know, at, at the age of three to, you know, I moved out at 17, you don't understand that, you know, it's, it's all why me, why me. And I didn't grow up in a faith filled home, mm. you know, so I didn't, I didn't know how to turn to God. And I know that sounds wild, but it's like, I, I didn't, you know, I felt so alone and I kept thinking, you know, why, why doesn't she love me? Why does it, my mom love me. And my mom was just full of all of these like empty promises. She lived away in like Florida and Texas. So I hardly ever saw her. Uh, and when she would say she was coming, she wouldn't, mm -hmm. you know? And so it's like all these things and despite all of that hurt and that trauma, I still have so many great memories as a child. You know, uh, we didn't have a whole lot. My dad worked really, really hard, but, you know, it, it's hard to stretch money, you know. Um, and But I was an athlete and I played softball and I ran track and cross country and I was very disciplined in school. I wouldn't say I was good at school, but I was disciplined. So I made good grades. But now I look back and I'm like, dude, I made good grades and I was a great athlete all because I was looking for love. I was looking to be celebrated. Right. But also it was an outlet, you know, mm -hmm. but you take that and, and then you you transform that into adulthood. And what do you think I've been doing? <laughs> I've been trying to achieve. I've been trying to be celebrated, trying to get validated. Right. 
and you get in an environment like sales, you know, insurance sales, and man, you can make a lot of money with, with an achiever mentality, but also you, you can almost like totally miss the best things in life because you're focused on the wrong things. Mm. You know, I relate with you, right? Type A, quick starter, uh, high achiever, high performer. And it's like we're chasing the next dopamine hit, right? Of closing that deal, getting mm -hmm. that approval, making that huge commission. But to your point, uh, we miss out on love and we can remain lonely for many, many, many years. So where did God enter into your story? Uh, 2020. Uh, and, and you know what, like it's, it's wild to put a date or a time on it because he like entered in way before I was present enough to see it. <laughs> <laughs> when did you enter into God entering into your story? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Better way, right? Uh, 2020. So uh, before, before like really the pandemic like hit and we were all shut in, um, I'll never forget this. And my oldest daughter she does not even remember saying this. So, you know, it's wild, but I'm like, come home, change real quickly. I'm running out to a board meeting and she like stops me in the kitchen and she's like, where are you going? And I'm like, oh, I have a board meeting. And she's like, oh, you know what? Like, I think it's great what you're doing in the community, but we need you here too. How old was she? Seven, 16. 16. Okay. So she just maybe, got, maybe even 15. She like, just got real with mom. Dude, I was like, okay, I raised you to be a confident young woman, but I didn't know it was going to come back to get me. <laughs> but it, it stopped me in my tracks. And I remember getting into my car and I was like, whoa, that hamster wheel was spinning so, so fast. And it just came to a stop. Hmm. And I thought, okay, what am I going to do? So that night when I pray, <laughs> I was like, I, I don't want my own daughter to feel that way. Like I've been running from the way my mom made me feel when she made me feel like I wasn't important enough. And here I am doing it in my own home because I think I'm doing the right thing. But really, when I dug down deep, those board, that's, that was all selfish stuff. Like I was you just trying to get my name out there, you know? You know, like we're doing the wrong thing just differently, Ugh. but we're doing the same thing as our parents. When we were hurt by them, we're doing the exact same thing. We just do it differently. Mm -hmm. And we're like, oh, no, I'm doing the right thing. No, you're doing the wrong thing, just differently. Okay, continue. So yeah. so you were praying at that point? Yeah, I've always said prayers at night. Okay. Um, but I think Did you believe God existed? Did I you did. believe he loved you? Did you believe you were loved? Yeah, I just don't think I felt it. Like, I, I believed in the concept of it. But again, <laughs> paying attention, right? Yeah, like yeah. being present enough. And so that's what I figured out, like, you know, or what maybe God planted in my mind was, hey, you've got to figure out some time to get still. You've got to start working on you because, you know, we all hear it. You can't pour from an empty cup. Because at that time, like literally, like I had no morning routine. I would wake up. Like it's the latest minute I had to possible to get ready <laughs> and get out the door. So if you can imagine, like one thing my dad has always done is make sure to like make positive deposits into me. And he was very, very like clear about how this may be the only positive thing that you have all day. And I want to make sure I'm a part of that. Mm -hmm. But I was like making withdrawals for my children before they even went to school. And, you know, you think about how sad that is because they go to school and kids are mean. You know, Kids are so mean to each other. It is so sad. And then here they've got this mom that's like probably yelling at them, rushing them out the door, dropping them off late. You know, like I was a hot mess, but still being so successful in my business. Right. Under the surface of my business was a family that was unsuccessful. And then, you know, you bring bring my husband Garrett into it. He was loving me so good, but it was never enough because I had all these voids, right? All these ways I wasn't loved my whole life. And in my mind, he didn't get it. He didn't get me. He didn't see me, right? He didn't appreciate me because I was, I was trying to get him 
to fill those voids and to love me. So I felt like someone, but really what God showed me is like, I have to get to know myself and I have to fall in love with myself and I have to love myself or nothing else will ever, ever matter. Right. And so, you know, I decided after that, I was going to create some space in my morning, right? I was really going to make some time and I didn't know what the morning routine would look like. And so I started doing some research and a book that changed everything for me was the 5 a.m. club by Robin Sharma. I don't know if you've heard of Robin, um, but I mean, he's, he's amazing. He's written several books. But I read the book and I thought, okay, well, I can visualize like a morning routine. So I just started getting up at five, which was a hot mess. Like, you know, if you put your phone next to your bed, you're going to hit snooze and you're going to mess up so many times. Oh, my (laughs) phone is not near my bed. I've learned that lesson. That's good. I had to buy like an old school alarm clock, put it across the room, like literally make myself get up. But, but then I, if you have good aim, you could throw a pillow at it, you know, <laughs> I never did that, but I would get up and I would start just like sitting still. Then I bought a Jesus calling book, which I still use, uh, before the show we were talking about, um, you know, my reading today, but I just, and then I, then I found an app and so it just progressed. Right. Mm-hmm. But the main, the most important part was that I found time to be quiet with God. So let's just be clear. Did you actually find time or did you actually sacrifice other things and make time? Mm, Yeah. Well, I guess it's the second one. Sacrifice sleep, sacrifice the night before, right? Like you can't get up at 5 a.m. Or now when I like to get up at 4 a.m., if you're staying up late, you know, if you're not making healthy choices the night before, you know, like you're just not going to get up. Right. So it, it was a sacrifice, um, but it's it's definitely one that I still keep sacrificing because, you know, it's like the more time I spend with him, the more time I want with him. Mm, I get that. It's like when you start dating, you know, and you find that your dream person. Oh, he's going to be my future husband. I just know it. And you can't get enough of him. Right. You're insatiably in love. Right. And this is what God wants with us. Right. He's insatiably in love with us and he can't get enough of us. But we don't see it that way. Right. Because we think we're a mess. So you start doing this 5 a.m. This routine. You don't have it figured out. You're a hot mess in it. You're trying to sit still. That's not easy for high achievers No. to shut off the brain and all the noise. How did that go? Well, that was probably the hardest part because when you get still, the brain does not shut down, shut off. <laughs> like that's, that's what we're, most of us are running from when we can't sit still. You know, I used to think, okay, that badge of honor of busy, you know, I carried it around. Like I was like some big detective or something. Uh, <laughs> you know, It is like, oh, you take naps or you pause, you sit still. Oh, like I've looked at that as like a weakness, right? But the reason that that those of us that claim to be busy is a strength is because we don't want to get quiet with our thoughts. And that's why was that for you? Well, gosh, I mean, look at all the I mean, y'all only heard a glimpse of all the things that I've been through, like I reliving all of that. Like I was terrified of that. But years later, like I'm still like the more I sit, the more things I remember from my childhood and it's it's frightening to think I am 39 years old and just two weeks ago, a story was shared and it triggered something for me and I, another wound appeared and it's, it's, I mean, it just, it brings you to your knees, you know, and I have to show you this. So look at this, see that little girl right there. Mm -hmm. That's me. And uh, I was probably about, I don't know, three or four. So my son's age. And yesterday I went to this um, luncheon where they were recognizing some women uh, locally and um, they had that on my table. And I literally, it took everything I had to not cry. And it's making me emotional now because it is still hard to look at that little girl and think of all the things that she went through. 
And that's what was so hard about getting quiet because all of these things started resurfacing things that I'd just been sweeping under the rug and achieving and working around. You know, when people talk about their easy button, my easy button is work. I'm good at what I do and I can go to work and I can leave it all at the doorstep and I can go make people happy and I can protect people. And I can like, I'm in control of that because God gave me these strengths. I feel in control, right? Like I'll go to work and then it shuts it all out. So when you're quiet, like you have to get real with, with some things and, you know, talking about Robin Sharma, he says to heal a wound, you have to feel a wound and feeling things all over again, like that, it rips you apart. Yeah. Thank you for going there with us. You know, I look at it this way. Silence is a mirror to our soul. Like if you want to see what's happening on the inside, sit in silence. Mm -hmm. And so many times in our careers, our work, we lie to ourselves and we say we're running towards something, right? I'm running towards this accomplishment, towards this next goal, towards this income level, when in fact, we're actually running from something. And that's the hamster wheel you spoke about, right? We're running from the darkness within us because we don't want to face it. It's too scary. Yet we can never heal from it until we go inside, sit in it, look it in the eye, feel it, like you just quoted, feel it. But that's not enough because our strength's not enough to heal ourselves, not in these areas. But to sit in silence with God, with our Father in heaven, and say, Daddy, this is too much for me. Can you take this from me? Right? Will you take this? I surrender all this darkness to you. See, this is the process of healing, BC Nation. We all have to go through. How long you want to resist is your decision in your life. Eventually, you'll either go through it in this life or you'll sit in front of your creator and he'll say, why didn't you bring this to me? Hmm. And then it's too late. Right? So like, I just want to really acknowledge Jennifer for doing this. Uh, in her own life, that little girl been through all that stuff. It's terrible. I was the little boy that went through all the stuff, right? I get it. They say a lion recognizes another lion, right? You know, it's like we've been through the battle, we've been through the yeah. battle, and now you know God can use us to lead others, you know, into the light out of their darkness. So that's awesome. So Jennifer, let's talk about. You know, you're, you're in your quiet time, you're trying to journal, you're trying to hear from the Lord, your brain's racing because you're a high achiever type. Uh, what, what started to work for you in this hearing from God, healing from your past? Like, what did you do that actually started to work? Mm hmm. Well, I'll tell you what doesn't work first, having the phone near you. Okay. Well, duh. Like think about it think about how hard that is for most people to like get that thing away but you know you you get you get in your morning routine and you're like oh I want to look up what this means and you pull out your phone next thing you know you've ordered something on Amazon you know it's like <laughs> what happened whoa wait where am I so first things first I had to figure that out like get this phone away and so like that pen to paper right like you're talking about that journaling and so I had to get into scripture. Okay. So the Bible was not something I felt confident ever quoting, talking about opening up. Like I was just so lost. Um, but so having that Jesus calling book, right? Like it gives you a meditation and then it gives you scripture. So I started just praying and meditating on the scripture from that book. And then I took it a next, a next step. I started journaling, like what that meant to me. And then I started making intentions and praying around the scripture. So it's, it's, it's very simple what I did, but also it took a lot of courage, right. To, to, to get in there and, and know, and like really tell myself like, it's okay. Give yourself grace. You don't just because you, I'm sure you could quote every book in the Bible. I don't know with your podcast. No. Okay. But we, we assume that, right. If someone's speaking and they're, they're quoting scripture, we're like, oh, wow, like I'm intimidated. So, you know, the thing that was most powerful and the thing that is really the secret sauce of my book, Project You, 
is, is scripture, you know, like literally everything we're going to go through in life. There's already, there's already a guide and a pathway, you know, we're watching the chosen as a family and, um, you know, it's so amazing to be able to visualize things like, and man, the actor that plays Jesus, when I read scripture now, it makes me want to cry because I actually visualize like, oh, it's just amazing. So anyways, um, we were just at the, uh, the, the national Catholic men's conference in Cincinnati, Ohio last week. And Jonathan Rumi, the actor who plays Jesus in the chosen was the head head speaker. Um, and I got to tell you, to see Jesus not dressed up in robes, but in like high Hollywood fashion with bracelets and rings mm-hmm. blew my mind, blew I my mind. Too. But he was s- such a humble man, yeah. such a humble man, a natural introvert. And he was just talking about how God, um, you know, he surrendered everything to God one day, his whole career, everything. And he said, I can't do this. Mm-hmm. I can't do any of this. I, I give you permission, take over every everything from now on is yours. And he said, and that's when the chosen happened was shortly after that. Isn't that amazing? Like God picked him and said, you're going to represent me Mm -hmm. at this time in history. But what was the prerequisite? And, And this is full circle BC nation. He got quiet with God. He hit his knees. He got humble. He released control and he gave God all control for the rest of his life. Then God took over, but not before. His whole career wasn't working out in Hollywood before then. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. Thanks for bringing that up. All right, okay. so so you got this uh, journal, Project You, and it's all based on scripture. That's the secret sauce. That's the power within it. Tell us what happened there. What's the story there? There's so many journals, you know, out there, daily journals, devotional journals in the Protestant space, the Catholic space, uh, you know, and a lot of them are good. Why weren't they enough? What what happened? How did you know you needed to go create your own? Yeah. So I have a whole cabinet of those, right? (laughs) I bet you, I bet you we'll have some matches, you and I. (laughs) Whole cabinet of them. Um, And I always wondered that too, like, why doesn't this work? It's beautiful. This person created it, you know, but it it, it wasn't the flow of things that kept me consistent. It wasn't, it it didn't have content or practices that were simple, but profound, right? Like, and, and it didn't have everything all in one place. Like I literally had six books I was carrying around my husband, Garrett, when we would travel, he'd be like, you got your book bag, you know, like, so, and so I'm, I'm like, headed to Jesus school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's like, okay, this is not working. And that's why people don't continue to do it. If we don't break things down and keep them simple and have, have practices that flow with life, right? I, I have two businesses. I have three children. I have a husband. I'm a community. Like you, you, I love to travel. And if you have practices that are not realistic to take with you where you go, you're not going to continue doing them. So for one, Project U has a habit tracker in that, in it, so that every single day you're tracking the habits, not the goals, the habits that create the best version, right? So my habits, you know, exercise, like if we don't move our bodies every day, like our mind is not going to operate at its, at its potential water. If we're not hydrated, our brain cannot function at its potential, right? Sleep reading, like all of the things that I knew would then push me to be my best version or achieve my goals. You know, we, we have the habit tracker. It's so simple. It's so elementary, maybe to some people. I saw one on online the other day and I'm like, but we got to stay away from our phones. We can't use these electronic things. It's another thing that we did, right? We moved everything to electronics and now we're like, why is my brain so full of this stuff? We're so distracted because we're on technology all the time. Um, but also the book. So it's it's not necessarily um, uh, a, a journal. It's a guide because it also has a planner in it. So you can brain dump all the things. Like if if you can relate to me, like when I'm getting quiet, that's when all my to-dos are coming to me. And yeah, God says, leave those here. But I don't trust that my brain's going to remember them. 
So I can just jot them down while I'm there. And I don't have to feel guilty about that because if I get into my phone and try to send myself an email, well, guess what? There's already 15 emails waiting for me. It's going to distract me. So having, having the, the brain dump section or the, the planner, the part, you know, that's in there and those are to help. But like you said, the secret sauce is the daily devotion, right? And we've designed this thing where we include scripture sometimes for you. It's a 90 day book. So sprinkled throughout the 90 days, you have scripture in there as a guide. And you know, it's always so profound. I create like what goes where, like, so I go and find the scripture but I use my book too. And on those days that the scriptures provided, I always need that scripture that day. Hmm. Like the placement, it's incredible. But the book guides you through being able to take scripture and relate it to your life, you, where you are. Because that's what's so incredible about scripture. Like we can all relate to it in a different way in different parts of our lives different seasons, different days, but also like prayer, like praying around that reflection, writing it out, pen to paper and taking it to God. That is habitual. That is a routine. And we can't develop routines without the habits, the practice and the work. So yeah, you can go and you can pick this beautiful book up, right? That's what always drew me to the books for the covers. But if you don't do the work and you don't set with this book, and it only takes 30 minutes a day, 30 minutes to, to do this, and you will set with God, it will create the habits to, to have you sit there with him. But then guess what? That 30 minutes will expand and you're going to want to get up early. You're going to want to come back to it. And that's another thing. Like this book can go everywhere with you. And I don't know if this is okay to say, but I figure might as well be real. On my show. Yes. Okay. Like I would be like so holy and so amazing in the morning. And by lunch, I'm dropping, dropping F-bombs at my desk. And I'm like, where did she go? Right. I call then... that bipolar Christianity. It's great. <laughs> well, there you go. I got another diagnosis, but, uh, <laughs> but, you know, having this book right here with me, I can keep it open at my desk and guess what the power of that is right? It keeps me focused. We lose focus throughout the day. And, you know, just like I was reading this morning, like the bit, the, the biggest and best thing we can do is keep God, like stay in, in his presence, mm -hmm. right? We sit here as I sit here, like all these, all these folks are walking into my office because they want to work here. I've got an interview is waiting for me and I can get really distracted on that. Or I can refer back to what I said this morning which was prompted through Jesus calling God as things come to me today, help me realize what's for today, what's for right now in the moment and what you have planned for later. Like help me decipher the two. But if I don't have something in front of me, that's keeping me focused on him, I'll lose focus. And I'm sure people are better at that than me, but I've got to have tools and I've got to have a guide. And that's what project you is. You know, it also helps you reflect on what you're grateful for. You know, there's a quote out there. If, 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 um, you know, I'm grateful for what I have, what I have is enough. And so many times in this like Amazon prime world society that we're living in, we want more and we want it right now. We want it yesterday. And so many times, like everything we've ever wanted is right in front of us. As a little girl, all I ever wanted was a happy joyful, loving family. Hmm. And I have that and I've had that, but until I got off the hamster wheel and I let God take over, dude, I was, I was missing out on all of it. Probably on this path to destruction. Like there's no telling where I would have went. I'm so grateful that like he took me the other way. Like I look back and there's still some guilt in there. You know, because my baby who's 10 now, you know, I can remember like being on my laptop in the floor, just getting these quotes done, replying to these emails and she's playing. And I look up at my husband and this just look of disgust is on his face. Like he's so disappointed in me. 
but I couldn't even see it. I thought, oh, well, he doesn't appreciate how hard I work, <laughs> you know? And the reality is, is like now my four-year-old, like I'm so in the moment with him. I'm like, he's my do-over child, you know? Oh, uh, thank you, God, you know? It's like, now um, you take care of your sister. <laughs> because <laughs> I might've messed that one up. <laughs> oh gosh, I know. And I am having to undo things, but um, at least I'm aware enough now, you know? You know, Jennifer, thank you for your transparency. Thank you for your honesty, your rawness. Um, thank you for your tears, right? When I see a person's face leak, um, that's a good sign. It's a good mm -hmm. sign. And it means your heart's speaking now. Your head's out of the way. and And that's a beautiful place to be. Uh, so BC Nation, what question are you hoping I'm going to ask Jennifer right here, right now, that you want an answer to? Go ahead, send me those positive vibes. What are, is that what they call positive vibes? <laughs> send me it. What you got? What you got? I'm in the moment, man. I'm right here, right now with Jennifer. Jennifer, you did a journal for men. Yeah. You had, yeah. You had such success with the ladies that uh, you got a Project Him journal. Uh, how's it different? Guys need different things than women. Guys think different. Their day goes different. They're dealing with different circumstances. Did your husband design this thing? Or did you try to like live vicariously through him? <laughs> he helped me so much. You know, first thing he says, well, you got to come up with a cover that's not so girly. <laughs> Get the flowers out of here. Check. Check. It looks very like polo nautical, like it's, you know, navy and white. Um, so it looks really clean. Yeah. So we we changed, um, you know, in the, the women's book, there's the confidence statements, the I am statements. So we changed those more um, to, to goals and actions. Um, you know, there's less spaces for the gratitude because he was like, I don't, I, where do I keep writing here? I'm writing the same things. Um, we changed the way it looks, but th the reality is, is that we, we, as men and women, we need different things, but when it comes to this work, that's so, that's so like scripture, scientific, like we all need the same things. You know, like we've got to get to the word. That's, that's the biggest part of project you like get in the word and, and hear how God is speaking to you through the verse. Right. But then also like, be grateful for what he he's given you. Like, you know, like when we're joyful and we rejoice and we, you know, shine the light, like shine the, the mirror back to him, I guess is what they say. Like that makes him so happy. Right. And it it's a profound effect in our lives. Um, but we've all got to move our bodies. We've all got to track habits, you know? So the content of the book from men to women doesn't change much. Um, but the way it looks definitely has because, you know, it's, it's a different appeal from men to women. Um, there are some Hey Girl Hays. Uh, my husband's like, you got to do Hey Girl Hay because you always say that. Like he gives me some of the best ideas. I did not put those in the guys book. Uh, the quotes. Thank you. <laughs> the quotes are yo more... bro yo <laughs> yeah. and if i put that in there no one would buy the book they'd be like who's this chick right um but the quotes are more you know masculine men driven i pulled them more from sports and you know those kind of things um but those are the big shifts pretty cool thanks for doing that right so you know three things that are coming into uh reality for me or visibility for me is three steps for you, BC Nation, uh, from Jennifer. First, every morning, get into silence. Get into silence. Step one. Step two, get into the word. All right? Get into the word. Step three, uh, get into... I'm going to say get into a journal, right? You got to be writing. It's got to be tactile. It's got to, you know, not on your phone, not digital, like she's saying. When you write something out, 80% more retention, right, for your brain as far as you as far as you're acting upon it. And then step four, get into action, right? Get into action now in your day. And then invite God into every detail of those actions throughout your day. 
Like you're going into a conference, like Jennifer is about to go hire some people, right? Mm -hmm. And do some interviews. Well, I really hope she brings Jesus in to those interviews and say, God, I like this person. I'm 90% a yes. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yes or no? And like, let God run her company, her division. Like, are you willing to do that? Are you willing to give up that control? Listen, it's called a competitive heavenly advantage. I like that. Right? Because God can see what you can't. He knows if that person's going to work out. He knows if that deal's going to go through and if it's going to play out well for you. He knows if the partnership's going to work or fail. He already knows it. You don't. So why wouldn't you want the CEO of the entire universe sitting in your decision making? Can you give me a good reason? Like, this is powerful. It's powerful stuff. So we've been speaking with Jennifer Keller. She's a Redbird rock star. Let's go. Redbird has a significant meaning to her, right? There was a little red bird that flew into her morning time with God every morning. Mm -hmm. And then God blessed you with that bird every day. And what does red bird mean? And that's it. You know, that was, that was, you know, we're always looking for a sign or a symbol, I think. Right. Um, and God knows what we need to see in order to see him. And for me, it was the the repetition of that red bird and the journey that I went on trying to figure out what does it mean? I was going to Google instead of to God. I'll be completely <laughs> honest. Like I'm Googling, what does the red bird mean? You know, um, but that's that was him showing up every single day, you know, and uh, it kept me looking and kept me present, kept me going back. Um, and so of course that had to be a part of this book because God put this on me. Like I didn't go out and say, I'm going to create this book and I'm going to start this other business. He literally one day I had this incredible encounter, you know, I just got the warmest feeling all over me. I'm out doing my morning routine with all my books. And he said, you need to create a book, one book. And I'm like, me, you know, <laughs> then I'm like, well, anybody else even want this thing? Is there even a need? So then he activated my business brain that he's been working on for 16 years, right? All of these skills. So think about that. Like so many times we're like, I have these skills and I'm good at this business for this business. Not always. Sometimes he's preparing us for something way bigger than where we're even at. A lot of times he is, right? Mm. And so all of these skills then gave me the courage, the knowledge, the how to, to go and do business research and analyze things and figure out, have the courage to go be new at something. I mean, I messed this thing up so many times. I don't know about printer paper, books, binds, I said all the wrong words in all the meetings. People like, I didn't go to one printing company because they were really rude to me about what I didn't know. I'm like, dude, I just told you I was new, <laughs> you know? Um, but at the end of the day, like he called me to create this book. And even if it was to make me better for my family, that would have been enough. But what's happened since then, like now I'm taking my trauma to testimony and I'm speaking in groups about my trauma, my tragedy, the things that's happened to me. And oh my goodness, does that like rock me? Because I have to get so vulnerable. This woman who I've told myself, like, I have to be perfect. And I have to show people that you can break the cycles and all these things. I get on stage and I'm crying in front of complete strangers, which, oh, that's another thing. But I'm giving people hope through God's work, right? Every day, my one thing, you know, project, do you ask you what's your most important action item today? Because so many times we go to bed and we beat ourselves up because we didn't get 50 things done when really we're only designed to get a few things done, right? Mine is to use my gifts to glorify God. And when I can lay my head on my pillow and know I did that, I won the day because we're only here for a little bit of time. And we're here to serve. We're here to, to, to be in community. And we're here to do his work, not ours. 
And so this is just a little bitty book, right? But it has made a profound difference in the lives of others. And I get to hear those stories. And it's no more about the validation, right? It's encouragement to keep going. Oh, it is working. Okay, it is helping people. I've got to keep going because it's not easy. Mm -hmm. Even though I know it's God's work, it's not easy. And sometimes I want to give up. Sometimes the critics are too much. You know, it's not easy, but I keep going because he keeps, he keeps taking me there and I'm trusting and I'm surrendering. And I'm not like uh, the guy that played Jesus. Like, I can't just give it all at once. I'm, it's like, here you go. Okay. Take this part or take this part. I pray that I can be like him. <laughs> Would you just stop being a spiritual wuss? <laughs> Like it's a well, decision. Maybe somebody can relate to that, okay? You know, it's so funny because you're like, I can't do it. I can't make that big decision. <laughs> Yet all day long in your work, you make these types of decisions That's with true. certainty. Mm -hmm. With certainty, right? All right. Jennifer Keller. I like her. She's, oh. good. She's good people, BC Nation. Aren't you glad I brought her on? Come on now. Let's go. Good All right, job. Jennifer, welcome to my favorite part of the show. Welcome to the confession round. Dun, dun, dun. I'm going to ask you 10 quick fire questions. You'll have about three seconds to answer each. Don't overthink it. It's just for fun. It's like a game show without the prizes. Are you ready? Sure. Let's go. What's your favorite thing about God? Uh, he's loving. He really is. What is your least favorite thing about God? Mm, he doesn't always tell me why. Isn't that annoying? Jeez, this guy, this guy. Uh, I believe we're all struggling with something at any given moment of our life. It's just part of the human condition. What are you currently challenged with right now, either professionally or personally? Uh, I think uh, true connection. Just uh, feeling really understood or in a circle with, people that are thinking about the same things I am or working towards the same things I am. Yeah, for sure. Got it. What are you most afraid of? Um, probably an interruption to my loving family. Yeah. Behind me, Satan. Let's go. Mm -hmm. What did you spend way too much time doing this past year? Chasing, um, chasing a number in my, my insurance business. <laughs> See, I'm not perfect. I'm working. I'm still a work in progress. Just, just a, a spoiler alert. Once you get the number, it's not going to satisfy you. And then you're going to just move the horizon go. to the next number. <laughs> just FYI, but you knew that already. <laughs> what secret fear do you have about people? Mm. I guess just that they won't understand me, maybe mm. judge me. Hey, they do it to everybody. Like, welcome to the club. There's your people. <laughs> 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 the, I got judged 50 times today, club. Yeah. All right. Uh, what do you wish you had learned sooner about God? That he, he's always there and he is so forgiving and he like, he knows you better than you know yourself. So why run? Why hide? And the, the biggest thing is like, you don't have to earn his love. Let's go. <sighs> What's a new habit you're going to create? Staying in his presence. Yeah. <laughs> still working on it yeah but i will tell you uh last summer i was so consistent with that and i was such like in this like state of joy and having worry like why can't i keep asking him like why can't i just go back to that <laughs> he's probably like you can just do it you know BC Nation, remember, remember, and thank you, Jennifer, for bringing this up. Remember, there are two types of seasons in your life, spiritual seasons. There's seasons of spiritual consolation, 
Those are the highs, the mountaintops experience, mountaintop experiences with God, where you feel joy, elation. You're like, wow, he's here. He's my dad. He loves me. I'm, oh, it's amazing. And then there are the spiritual desolation seasons, right? And one always follows the other. And desolation, right? You're desolate. You feel alone, abandoned. Where did God go? He was here a second ago. Now I feel alone. Where did he go? Right? And if you read all throughout scripture, everyone went through this. So it's like waves on the ocean in your spiritual life. It's normal. It's okay. Expect it. If you ha- in a spiritual consolation, spiritual desolation's on the way next. Prepare yourself. If you're in spiritual desolation right now, spiritual consolation's on the way. Congratulations. Something to look hey. forward to. Yeah. Okay? So just get this because the enemy wants us to lie and, and uh, believe that something's wrong. We're doing something wrong. There's something wrong with us. And that none of that is true. This is just the seasons of the spiritual journey, okay, that God has orchestrated. So once we get this, you can just move through one into the other. And before you know it, you're sitting with the king and well done, my good and faithful servant. Yeah. All right. I hope that serves someone, one person well. Uh, What's a bad habit you're going to break this year, Jennifer? Hmm. A bad habit I'm going to break oh, is... The one people repeat, stalling. Oh, no, I don't know. I'm trying to focus on the good habits, right? Like uh, the gap in the game. Um, I think inconsistency. Um, so good, a good bad habit that I could break is inconsistency in like how I nourish my body. Okay. Yeah. Got it. So, you know, I need to eat better and stay consistent with it. Cool. Pick three words to describe who you are now. Okay. I'm faithful. I'm passionate and I'm loving. Pick three words to describe who you were pre COVID pre project. You journal pre quiet time with God. Depleted lost and uh, people pleaser. Man, why'd you just call out like, a million of my listeners. That was so rude. <laughs> Depleted, lost people pleasers. Oh. Can you believe it? Jennifer called you out by name. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. All right, Jennifer. Last question. If you could come back to life after you died, look your husband, your kitties, your family and friends in the eye and give them only one piece of advice about God and relationship with him, what would you say to them? I would say you are so loved beyond what you can even imagine. And he created you to be you just as you are. So go be you. BC Nation, just go be you. Everyone else is taken. (laughs) let's go go. all right jennifer homework assignment time you get to give my audience one homework assignment what's one action they must take this week if they want to stop being depleted lost and people pleaser okay so your homework is to get up 30 minutes earlier Mm. than you normally do and sit still it's hard it's going to be hard, but you Someone, can do it. One of you is going to accept this challenge. You've been avoiding it. You've been told to do it for quite a long time. Holy Spirit's been prompting you to come and spend quiet time with him, and you've been avoiding it. And now enough crap, poo-poo, has hit the fan in your life where you're like, oh, I'm going to do it. And you're going to choose it today. You're going to choose it today. And tomorrow morning, you're going to wake up, and you're going to sit silently with a pen and paper. And God, God, silence and time. That's your secret formula. God, silence and time. All right, BC Nation. Did you enjoy this episode with Miss is Jennifer Keller? Mrs. is Jennifer Keller. Um, If you enjoyed it, like go write a five-star review about her, not this guy. Okay. Everyone keeps writing my name in these reviews. Stop it. Stop. I have an ego too. and, and, And you're all like putting lighter fluid on it. Stop it. So (laughs) put the name of the guest that uh, served you well, um, that moved you one step forward in your spiritual journey, right? And if Jennifer did that for you today, please go thank her. 
uh, at Apple Podcast. Uh, you could write your five star review for her there, uh, stitcher.com, or you can go to brokencatholic.com, brokencatholic.com. If we like what you write, I'll give you a live shout out on the show, which I'm about to do for PD 6753. PD 6753, thank you for your five star review. Wrote a uh, great podcast for Catholics and Protestants alike. I agree. Uh, darn it, Joseph. Joseph is a dynamic speaker and brings get a great guest. Thank you. Great guest on his show. Uh, I appreciate uh, his, their authenticity, energy, and intellect. See, I'm, I'm teaching you how to wordsmith this, okay? Stop <laughs> writing about one person. We're all in this together, people. All right. Thank you, uh, PD6753, for your five-star review. BC Nation, go write yours today for Jennifer, for Jennifer. Jennifer, where do we go to find out more about you, to connect with you? And darn it, I want a journal. I want a journal. I know you're going to comp me because I'm a show host. That's one of the privileges of being a show host. You're going to comp me. Sure, I will send you one. I'll be happy to. Let's go. Uh, oh, by the way, I have a wife while I'm at it. I have a wife. I have a wife, you know. I'm sure she's amazing. Let's go. Okay, so you can connect with me um, on Instagram, Jen Keller three, and connect with Redbird Press at Redbird Press on Instagram and on Facebook. You can learn more about Project U. Uh, order your book at redbirdpress.net. All right, there you go. BC Nation. Jennifer Kelly Keller, Jennifer Keller. I'm going to mess it up right at the end. It's great. Jennifer Keller, thank you for being on Broken Catholic. Uh, you're a rock star. I wish you God's love, peace, and joy in your life and more Thank of you. it. Thank you.